Hey guys, let's take a look at instructions and information for the reading journal entry assignments. As you prob probably already know and have seen, um, I use the acronym RJE for reading journal entry. So when you see that RJE, uh, you'll know what that's all about. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and read this to you and uh, go all the way through it. There, there will be parts where I'll just ask you to pause the video and read uh, those sections because I feel it, uh, it would be a lot more efficient for you to do that. Let's get started. About the reading journal entry. You're about to read the novel Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress by Dai C.G. This novel is good. What I mean by that is this. It appeals to me. So, why should I believe it to be good? You may ask, and rightly so. A novel's good if the reader is affected by it. And it doesn't matter the effect. That is, you may find yourself encouraged after having read a novel. You may find yourself depressed after having read a novel. You may find yourself hopeful after having read a novel. But if you find yourself bored after having read a novel, either the writer has done a poor job at writing or you, the reader, have done a poor job at preparing for and focusing on the novel. In the case of C.G.'s novel, which is a national bestseller, by the way, literary experts agree that poor is exactly opposite the adjective that purely describes the writing in this book. Therefore, your boredom with the novel is not likely about it, the novel. Your boredom is likely about you. You are bored because of you. When we read a lengthy piece of work, there are three extremely important elements necessary if you're going to be expected to be affected by the work, not affected by ourselves. Number one, a commitment to time. Number two, a commitment to focus, and number three, a commitment to contemplation. Let me expound on each. First, a commitment to time. A commitment to time means that I've determined, I've determined that I'm about to spend a specific amount of time in the book. This requires a consideration of schedules and responsibilities. For example, if I know that I start work at 7 a.m. and I don't return home until 5 and that I have a responsibility to my family or, uh, and I won't have time to myself until 8 p.m., I'll do my reading between 8 and 9 p.m. Okay, I've committed to a specific time and a specific amount of time to reading. And I'm darn well going to stick to that commitment. A commitment to focus is all about determination. Let's face it. After hours of work and hours of family time and responsibilities, the thought of focusing on novel on a novel is, well, it's not exactly the standard choice of activity, to be sure. And what I'm learning, or have already learned, is that doing what I feel like doing is often not the best thing for me. So, I find a place where I won't be easily distracted. Now, for me, this is one of three places, either my car, my backyard, or my den usually depending upon the weather and who's at home. I do whatever it takes to place myself in a place where I will not be distracted, a place where I can spend the one hour that I have committed to in full focus. As I read, I'll choose to think only about the words that form the sentences, that form the paragraphs, that form the chapters, that form the parts of the book that I'm reading. And this, as you probably already know, is very difficult. And a commitment to contemplation. This results in a more clear understanding of what it is that I just read. This is a bit more difficult, albeit a bit more crucial than you might think. Contemplation is deep, reflective thought. Contemplation is you. After having finished the reading for the time to which you committed... Thinking not only about the elements, character, setting, plot, etc., of the reading, but also about the deeper context of those elements. What do they mean to you? 
How do they apply to your life? How do they fit into today's world? These and many other possible questions could be what you spend time deeply reflecting upon. And it is during this contemplation that the mind cements meaning. And this is where your journal entry comes in. So let's discuss. The three-pronged purpose of the journal entry is, number one, to become closely familiar with the basic parts of a story. Number two, to become closely familiar with various literary devices. And number three, to draw personal meaning from a novel through deep reflection. So let's take a look at these three purposes one at a time. Basic parts of a story or basic elements. Think of the basic parts of a story as the crucial elements necessary to tell a tale. For example, if I have no setting in my story, I have a very incomplete story. The same is true of all of these parts. A good story includes all of the basic parts of a story, which are, number one, setting. Number two, character. Number three, plot. Number four, conflict. And number five, theme. Be sure to pause the video here and read through the definition of each of those basic parts of the story. As you make your way through the story, in this case, Balzac, keep these things in mind. That is, both during and after your reading session, ask yourself about these elements. Each of them, setting, character, plot, conflict, theme, has significant roles in the story. In fact, the combination of all of them is the story. So, if you have either lost or not determined one of, or more of the elements, the story begins to lose its power and its significance. Literary devices or literary techniques. Literary devices are techniques used by writers in order to create effect. These are also used to help clarify meaning so that it reaches a deeper level. Here are 12 of the most common literary techniques. Number one, allusion. Number two, alliteration. Number three, diction. Number four, euphemism. Number five, foreshadowing. Number six, imagery. Number seven, irony. Number eight, juxtaposition. Number nine, mood. Number 10, satire. Number 11, symbolism. Number 12, tone. And notice I have given credit to TCK Publishing for my definitions of these elements. So make sure that you read through these literary devices, these literary devices. So pause the video and read the definition of each literary device. Before we dive into the key elements of reflective writing, let me urge you to grab your textbook, A Pocket Style Manual, and read Clarity on pages 2 through 15. Super great advice is found within. Drawing personal meaning. Pause this video and on your computer, click here or your phone, your device, click here on this video and watch it before you move on to the next part. It's going to, it's going to hopefully help you to learn about some of the key elements to reflective writing, which is the kind of writing that you'll be doing in response to the, to the novel Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress. And don't continue reading this unless you've watched the video. Okay, now that you've watched the video, I want to emphasize a couple of requirements that the author of the video did not discuss. First, it's important that you occasionally refer to the lists above. The lists I have above are on basic parts and literary devices when you're writing your responses. For example, I read a book last summer called A Separate Piece by John Knowles. Maybe some of you have either heard of it or maybe even read it. Here's a paragraph from my reflective journal. Now, this is what I wrote in my journal about a part of this book. The nightmarish tree accident scene took me back to my early teens. 
when my brothers and I would ride our bikes to the Moak Hill Bridge, primarily to dare one another to do the next idiotic and teen boy-like stunt, like jumping from the bridge into the rapidly moving river. I pictured myself doing it. I thought deeply about the physicality of it and the required elements for making sure I was guaranteeing a safe jump, but I never did jump. Knowles, the author, in this scene uses effective imagery to paint a vivid picture of a, sake, of, of a scared Jean, scared to jump from the tree, but more than that, scared to look scared in front of a friend for whom he had great admiration. It was only when his friend fell from the tree and, quote, hit the bank with a sickening, unnatural thud that he did, and without hesitation or thought, jump from the tree and into the river. Found on, found on page 13 of this textbook, or of this uh, novel. Noel's use of irony here, a character accomplishing a task by doing exactly opposite of what the character thought necessary, is a brilliant literary move, effectively highlighting the severity of the tragedy that had just occurred. What I just read, those two previous paragraphs that are underlined and italicized, were journal entries from my journal about a book that I read called A Separate Piece by John Knowles. This reflective writing references two literary devices, imagery and irony, to improve the story. It was devices like this that helped me to reflect upon the writing of this author in this book. And because the devices were used well, I came to this clear realization of the seizing power of fear that comes from too much analyzation. After my brothers jumped, I should have just jumped without thinking about it. Secondly, while it's fine to write things like, I loved the way the author included detailed information about the items in the locker room, or the part about the infirmary was sad, you must include the why. Here's more of something that shows reflective writing. The part about the infirmary saddened me. The author's effective use of imagery and simile made me feel as if I was there. Quote, deep guttural sounds like the moaning of a, of a pained sow in labor, page 46. These words took me back to a time when I was about 10. My mother took me to see my great grandfather, mother in a nursing home. In other words, don't simply tell me what it is that I already know. I've read this book three times and I don't need, nor do I want to be told about it. I do, however, and have great interest in your experiences. Tell me that and connect it to the events in the book. What are your experiences that connect with the experiences that you're reading about in this book? On a side note, be sure that when quoting a source, in this case the novel, because this is really the only, probably the only source you're going to quote in this assignment reading journal entry, you enclose them in quotation marks and enclose the page number in parentheses after the completion of the sentence within which you use the quote. You can see my examples above here uh, where I have quotes here, for example. Uh, I'm looking for my quotes. Ah, right here. Here's one. Quote, deep guttural sounds like the moaning of a pained sow in labor. And then I put, I indicate the page number from the novel in my journal entry. Okay. For more information on this topic of quotation marks and referencing what you're writing about, see 31B, using quotations effectively on page 119 of your textbook, A Pocket Style Manual. To conclude, good writing is difficult no matter what type. You have to put time and effort into good writing. If you don't, it's just drivel. And drivel is never attractive or desirable. So good luck. Click here to go to the Balzac 
pre-reading assignment. Before you do your first journal entry, I want you to do the pre-reading assignment, which is pretty simple and actually, I think, pretty fun. And it's a quick way to get a few points. After you've done that, you can click here to go to the actual first draft of this assignment. Take care.